Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the formula auditing features in Microsoft Excel, including the trace precedence and trace dependence features. So I have here an Excel worksheet in a workbook, and this worksheet is designed to calculate the 95% confidence interval. And when working with research and statistics, these types of Excel spreadsheets are fairly common. What can happen as you progress and build an Excel spreadsheet and start to add functions and formulas to it is you can lose track of which cells are linked to other cells. So when you go back to maybe clean up a worksheet, for instance, there'll be cells that you can't delete because they'll throw off other formulas and there are other cells that you can delete. In the top ribbon under formulas here, there's a section called formula auditing. And it has a few convenient features for keeping track of what's going on with your formulas. Let's say for instance that I'm interested in this value uh, mean, this mean value. And I want to see where this mean value comes from and what other cells use the mean value for calculation. So if you go up to in formula auditing, go up to trace precedence, you can see that it's selected this range to the left, the substance use inventory. These are fictitious data. And you can see there are 50 observations and they're all highlighted now by this blue line. And of course you have the circle and then the arrow pointing toward this cell. So I know that these values from A2 to A51 are used in the formula here in D2. Now if I click trace dependence up here in formula auditing, I'll see what other cells are using this mean value. And you can see it's the upper and lower limits of both these confidence interval generation methods. Right? So there's one method here of generating the confidence interval and then I have another one to the right. They both come up with the same values for the upper and lower limit and they both require the mean. So you can see you have four arrows. Now when you're ready to remove these arrows, there's a remove arrows uh, option up here. But if you look at this small down arrow, you can see there's options to remove the precedent arrows separately from the dependent arrows. So if I were to go to other values like standard deviation, I can trace the precedence and dependence there and you can see the uh, flow of it to these other cells similar with uh, sample size. But let's take a look at alpha. So I'm going to remove arrows. Alpha you can see is typed in. You can see it's 0 0.05. So if I click the trace precedence button up here, you can see this dialog appears. It says the trace precedence command requires the active cell contain a formula, which includes valid references. Now if I click trace dependence, you can see this particular cell does have dependence. The z-score, the confidence interval, and the sentence building formula down at the bottom. So far, all of the precedence and dependence have been on this same worksheet. So what if I were to make a calculation on sheet one, this blank sheet? So I make a calculation of sum and I want to add together the first 10 data points in this substance use inventory. You see it's 522, that's the sum, and if I trace precedence, it's going to bring up this little table icon. That lets me know that it's actually in a different worksheet. The data is not in this worksheet, it's in another worksheet. So what happens if I want to monitor this value 
while I'm over here in this worksheet. So I'm going to be making changes to the values here uh, that affect the sum over here. And I don't want to have to move back and forth between the worksheets. To monitor this cell, we can create what's called a watch window. And that's also under formula auditing. See watch window. And I can go to add watch and select the cell and click add. And now when I move to the data to worksheet, you can see this watch window stays open. And it's telling me now the value is 522, which I know. But if I were to change, say, this last value from 47 to 62, you can see that it updates the sum in the watch window. Of course, it does on the worksheet as well. And you can add multiple rows to this watch window. It's not restricted to just one cell or one worksheet. You can go through many worksheets and many cells and set this all up and it'll display as separate rows. If you want to delete a watch, just highlight that row and click Delete Watch. The last feature from the formula auditing section I'm going to show you is the Show Formulas button. And the Show Formulas button doesn't require you to select a specific cell. You can uh, have any cell selected on a worksheet because the Show Formulas affects the entire worksheet. So I click Show Formulas and you can see that instead of the values, the formulas now appear in the various cells. And to turn that off, just click Show Formulas again and it'll return back to its original state. The Show Formulas feature is active for only the sheets that you specify. So for example, if I go back up here and show these formulas again, and I move over to Sheet 1, you can see the value is still there. I have to click Show Formulas for this worksheet to bring this up. I hope you found this video on using formula auditing features to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.